Wednesday, October 25th, 12 noon. Uh, we have a quorum, so we're going to start with the uh, approval of minutes of the last meeting on September 20th, 2023. Hopefully everyone's had a chance to review that. I think now I have. Uh, and so I'll take a motion to approve. So move. Okay, a second. Thank you, Dan. Any additions, subtractions to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's approved. Uh, we'll move on to recognitions. Yep. Yep. We have two. Ms. Good afternoon. Um, we're actually going to start with Michelle Keaton, who is celebrating 30 years today. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit about Michelle's career uh, here at CDTA beginning in 1993. So she was following in the footsteps of her father and her uncle Bill Jones, who was a Troy operator for over 20 years. Growing up, she said she loved going to the Speedway, so she was around race cars and had a true love for driving. And she was one of our first full time star bus operators and was promoted to star dispatch in 2000. Shortly thereafter, Michelle transitioned to an Albany supervisor where she was actually the only female with 17 male colleagues at the time. And in 2006, she became a scheduler and is now our assistant manager of service planning. And she's responsible for developing route schedules and timetables that are efficient and measurable. Michelle enjoys being in her current position where she can make people's lives easier. She says she makes changes to schedules that produce better routes for our customers and our operators and is really concerned just about the overall well-being of the system in general for both. When she isn't helping with CDTA service planning, she enjoys riding her bike and kayaking. She and her wife Lorraine spent their 25th anniversary last year in Key West and this year they went to Iceland. And later this fall, she says they plan to travel to Hilton Head and they may even head to Alaska in 2024. Michelle says no retirement plans just yet, but when it when she does retire, it'll be in the south where the sun shines more, yes. and she said where she can enjoy her hot tub even more, <laughs> as it's a recent purchase, I guess. It is. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks to Iceland. Thanks to Iceland, <laughs> yes. So, Michelle, thank you for 30 years of service, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Celebrating her uh, 30th service anniversary as well. And she's one of our Albany operators. Uh, I'm a survivor. She's a survivor. Oh, we should have a little walk up music. Um, <laughs> and a little bit about Michalina's career. Um, before life at CDTA, Michalina was a licensed hairdresser. And a former CDTA operator, Bobby Kelly, used to come into a convenience store that she ran and suggested that she apply at CDTA. So he believed that her great personality would make her a great bus operator. At first, Michalina thought he was crazy, but decided to give it a shot, and she says she's never looked back. She says it was the greatest decision of her life. Michalina has always worked... Oh, I might have added that. I'm not sure. <laughs> Michalina has always worked in the Albany division. She started as a star bus operator and worked there for about a year before moving over to our fixed route system. She was on what we call the extra list, which means that there's a different route assigned each day. And she said she liked being on this because she became familiar with the routes and with the customers. So currently, Michalina is on Route 114, which connects Crossgate Mall and the Rensselaer. Joseph L. Bruno rail station. She says she's always busy and gets to talk with different people each day, and that's why she really enjoys driving that route. Mm -hmm. Michalina says a steady income and great benefits has allowed her to stay at CDTA for the past 30 years, and that the job gives her a great work-life balance and has provided for her family. Michalina enjoys her coworkers and says it's rare to find a work family that you actually enjoy. And she says when she isn't driving, you can find her with her family cooking and traveling. 
Michalina, congratulations on 30 years. These are two ladies um, who have been with us um, for 30 years. I, I'll be honest with you, 30 years ago, it's really difficult uh, for a woman in our industry. It's still difficult. Uh, I'd like to think maybe not as much, but uh, when they started here, um, it wasn't exactly a friendly place, and they both, you know, are in the part of the organization where it may have been most difficult. They both you know, thrived and succeeded, and I see them regularly. And whenever I see either one of them, there's a smile on their face, and usually um, something for me to think about. <laughs> uh, they're not shy, they're not bashful, and I appreciate that. They do great work. Great. We're going to move on to the uh, committee reports. I'll kick it off with the uh, Board Operations Committee. <laughs> that met on October 12th at 9.15 a.m. And we have a consent agenda item to kick things off today. The committee's been discussing an update to our bylaws to make it current with the governance structure consistent with the culture of the company and focus on our DEI initiatives. Uh, we also need to update the committee structure within the bylaws to reflect our current governance practices. Uh, all of you have received a copy of the revised bylaws, um, and the Board Operations Committee uh, recommends their adoption. Uh, I need to receive a motion to approve the uh, updated CDTA bylaws. Peter, thank you. A second on that, Denise? Thank you. Uh, any questions about it? Uh, I think uh, most of the changes are relatively minor. I know we didn't get a red line version of it, but uh, where key was removed from the uh, from the document, uh, the committee structure was updated. I'm not sure if there was really much of anything else. No, the last update was about eight or ten years ago, and, and we've since really changed. Actually, more than 10, 10 or 12 years ago. Um, it didn't reflect um, community and stakeholder relations, some of the other name changes. Um, but Jamie's right, the he was removed. Um, I was amazed at how many times he was there, which I guess. Reflects, reflects the earlier comments. So, basically, a, a, a bring up to date bylaws. Anybody have any questions about the changes? How, how often are those? Is there a, just there's not a formal or process or schedule? You know, perhaps there should be, but I look at them every now and then. And usually, usually one of a board member will say, "Hey, take a peek at that. We didn't get to that." <clears throat> are those on our website as well? I don't know if the bylaws. I believe they are. I yeah. think I've looked them up there. Sorry to say, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. I'm, pretty I'm, sure. I'm pretty sure it is. We'll, 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 <laughs> we'll look. We'll look. <laughs> <laughs> not going to take my word for it. I will take your word for it. We'll still look just in case. Yeah, that's okay. Make sure they're in the right spot. Yeah. Okay, then uh, there's a resolution in front of you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <clears throat> it's approved. Uh, the rest of my report is that we, uh, the committee reviewed the agenda and activities for all the meetings here in the month of October. Uh, we received an update on the uh, merger of the Greater Glens Falls Transit District into CDTA. Uh, staff reports that CDTA bus stop signs will be installed in the Coming weeks, I guess we have to start somewhere, so we start with signs. Uh, the buses will be rebranded uh, shortly thereafter, and employees will be transitioning to the payroll uh, in late December. Lisa Morello gave us the advocacy update of the meetings with state officials to talk about work we need to do, adequate funding, meetings regarding the state budget, transit funding will continue through the fall and winter months. Uh, our board retreat is scheduled for Thursday, November 16th at Millionaire at the Albany Airport. Mark Ash will lead us in discussion about the work we need to do to continue advancing <coughs> CDTA. Uh, more details will be coming out shortly before that meeting on the 16th. Uh, and we got an update on the collective bargaining efforts 
uh, work continues in the executive session at the end of the meeting, we do want to provide you with a more detailed update. So that's my uh, report. Any questions about that? None. Uh, we'll move on to uh, the performance monitoring audit committee. Dan Lynch. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee met at noon on October 18th of this year. Uh, there are several consent item agendas to consider today. The first being an approval of a trolley purchase. It's a request to add two trolleys for additional service opportunities, including expansion into Woods Falls, and staff recommends this purchase. Procure these trolleys off of the contract with hometown trolley, and delivery is expected in spring of 2024. We need a motion to approve the purchase of two trolleys from Hometown Trolley, Winnipeg, Canada, for a total price of $404,534. Got a motion on that. Thank you, Denise. Second, <clears throat> Peter. Thank you. Questions, comments, problems? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. All right, second consent item is a contract for information technology services. An issue of RFP for information technology services received 18 proposals. Staff recommends awards to five firms you can select from based on specific needs, much like panel counsel and the legal department. We need a motion to award five one year contracts to the following CDW slash G of Illinois. Dine Tech of Albany, Pine Drill of New York, MGT of Florida, and TEK Tech Systems of Latham, not to exceed $3.1 million over five years. Any motion on that? Peter, second by Mike. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions? There was a lot of discussion about this. Up here. Yeah, and, and Chris can provide details here, but this really, I think. Some of you may be thinking back on the size of the contract of over several years, but it's <clears throat> multiple providers. But this is the a lot of the the things that we don't see and we just take for granted. But there's so much support technology-wise, Chris. I don't know how you want to sort of capsulize that. Yes, yeah, major buckets. You know, it has to do with security in incident triage and response, <clears throat> uh, perhaps. Uh, Business continuity planning and disaster recovery uh, architecture and services there as well. Uh, the existing uh, two or three folks that we have uh, working now as engineers and assistants with the help desk are also on one of these contracts. Um, this is not the first year we've done this. This is actually uh, at least the second time around. So we've had a group of contractors already. Uh, for the last five years, so we're just doing that again. Uh, and we budgeted based on operational costs as well as, as, as some project costs. But as discussed at the committee, if a major project comes up, like a major upgrade or a replacement, those will get budgeted into the project cost itself in, in, in the future as needed. So, yeah. any, questions. any questions on that? Important service that needs to be provided? All those in favor of the contract with those various firms say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. All right. Moving on. Resolution to accept state funding. Receive uh, FTA funding from programs that require New York State Department of Transportation to provide CDTA a 10% match to these funds. Uh, Department of Transportation also provides two capital programs, Accelerated Transit Capital and the Modernization and Enhancement Program that funds bus purchases. We need a resolution to accept $13,368,714 in state funding for a 10% match and 100% of the, the two New York State capital programs. <clears throat> need a thank you today, second by Jackie. To rubber stamp this, I guess. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Another uh, resolution to accept state funding for CRTC. The Capital Region Transportation Council received a competitive award from the Federal Highway Administration. CBTA is CRTC's funding pass through agency for federal and state funds. And they need a resolution that allows us to execute an agreement with the New York State Department of Transportation to accept $40,300. We need a resolution to accept this money. Uh, the New York State Department of Transportation 
uh, pass through to CRTC. George, is that good? Yeah. Do you second it? Ben, any, any questions on this? Something that <coughs> has to happen every year. Mm-hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Who? There's some fun ones with the insurance. We'll start with the workers' compensation excess insurance. Workers' compensation excess insurance provides protection against large claims for employee injuries on the job that exceed one million. We are self-insured for the first one million. We receive four proposals, including a two-year proposal, and staff recommends a contract to the low-cost proposer Midwest Employers. This policy reduces our annual premium by $102,000. We need a motion to award a two-year contract to Midwest Employers Casualty of Chesterfield, Missouri for $269,885 per year, effective November 10th, 2022, through November 10th of 2024. Is that 23? November 10th, 23? I just said it's a typo. It's just yeah, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. So November 10th of 23 through next November 10th of 24. Thank you. I have a motion from Denise. Second. Second. Thank you, Jackie. Any questions about this? Cost of doing business? Yeah. 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 Second. Not the bad news. All those in favor say aye. 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 And you oppose. <clears throat> and exceptions. It's approved. All right, next uh, is the approval of contract for general auto liability insurance. The general and auto liability insurance provides protection against claims for injury and damage to people and property caused by our operation. We are self-insured for the first $2 million with ex- excess insurance coverage layered at $8 million and $5 million for a total of $13 million. We receive one proposal for each layer for a total cost increase of 27%. We need a motion to award a one-year contract for an $8 million excess policy to American Alternative Insurance Company of Princetown, New Jersey, $5 million excess policy to Allied Work Assurance Company of New York City, and a non-certified acts of terrorism policy to Lloyds of London, New York City. Total premium cost is $698,859, effective on November 10, 2023. Motion on this. Second. Second. Mike, thank you. More cost to do. Um, I think we talked about this. Maybe main driver of that the fact that the fleet is much newer. Much of it is based here. Basically, it's all based on valuation. That's what we're told. Any questions? All those in favor of the uh, policy say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's approved. And next, we have the auto physical damage insurance. Committee me- meeting, we did not have any proposals for this insurance. And although we still do not have a firm quote, we have indications that we will have a complete quote over the next few days. Since we do not have a board meeting in November when this insurance expires, We recommend that we pre-approve this insurance policy. We need a resolution that says to maintain appropriate insurance coverage for its operations. The board hereby authorizes the authority to enter into a contract to secure up to $50 million of auto physical damage insurance upon receipt of the quoted premium for an amount not to exceed $550,000. It's a clever way to do it. It's basically stealing a page out of a couple of ways to do business. We apologize for this. Um, it's out of our control. Um, NFP <coughs> broker is handling this. You know, Mike is in daily t- contact with them. A bit of an arm wrestle, I guess, Mike. <coughs> we'll get. We'll get it. We think we know the cost, but we're not 100. It's, it's going to go up. We do. If, if that's, oh. I should note that this was reviewed by council. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Second on that. Thank you, Jackie. Any questions about it? It's a little unusual step, but we 
proposed for this in the past with these yeah. deadlines, and it's a reasonable way to keep keep going without having to reconvene. And as soon as we have have the insurances, or hopefully both. <clears throat> All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, thank you. We also heard from the audit committee. Sarah Matros provided her quarterly report, which is contained within your packets. And there's a few administrative discussion items as well. Our monthly management report. Mike Collins gave the monthly management report for September. MRT was 10% under budget for the month and 10% for the year. Customer revenue exceeded budget by 9% this month and 5% for the year. And I'll make the change. The Bruno Rail Station uh, revenue is up 12% for the year. Wages continue to be under budget because of manpower issues. Workers' compensation is 14.5% under budget for the year. And we are in good financial position. We also had a monthly non-financial performance report provided by Chris Desney. Um, fixed route ridership is up 16% this month and 18% for the year. Star ridership is up 8% for the month and 8% for the year. Fixed route on-time performance was at 69% and star on-time performance was at 73%. We missed 0.7% of all scheduled trips. By comparison, other similar size transit properties report missing 5% of their scheduled trips. Preventable accidents were high this month at 29, and non-preventable accidents were at 19. <clears throat> that concludes the report. Our next meeting of the committee is scheduled for December 13th of this year at 110 Waterloo Ave, and also on Microsoft Teams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Any questions about all that stuff that went on last week? <laughs> it's a lot of insurance stuff. Probably we, we, we guesstimated about a million and a half dollars of insurance will be purchased in this period. Just think of that in terms of a you know, percent of the budget. It's, it's about a percent, not even a percent. Yeah. We're seeing similar increases. Yes, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And just a question on the insurance. So we've authorized the purchase of the insurance. Do we need to revisit that after it's been to approve it after the fact? Or is the approval we've done cover everything? Kind of like the fuel, right? It gets purchased and then we approve it after the fact. We don't usually do this. So I'm just curious about the steps. Are we, are we done with that, the insurance? And I'm fine with that if we are, but I didn't need to. I, I was just curious as to whether once it's procured, do we need to then approve after the fact, or are we done with what we've already? I think we may want to at the next meeting. We may want to actually do it, but this should give us the authorization to at least enter into the contract. Do it. Yeah. So okay. we'll, we'll, we'll schedule it to be an action item in December, even though it's already engaged. It's already done. Okay. Thank you. Good point. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we'll move on to the next committee report, Community and Stakeholder Relations. Uh, uh, Lance is going to make the report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was like saying that. <laughs> community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met. I like uh, hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you did. <laughs> uh, met on October 19th in person and by Microsoft Teams. Staff provided a review of summer services and a monthly earned media and community engagement report. John Scherzer provided a review of our summer services lineup. John reviewed ridership and reach for the Saratoga Visitors Trolley, Grafton Lakes State Park Service, Albany and Schenectady Nature Buses, and our ride, the Plaza Tours. All summer services saw a strong ridership with most of the services seeing an increase. Saratoga Visitors Trolley, which runs July 13th through Labor Day, saw nearly 19,000 boardings this year, up 3,000 from 2022. Grafton Lake service has been a staple of summer offerings for the past 30 years. This year, nearly 1,500 customers were served. Service operates June through September. The Albany and Schenectady Nature Buses were popular offerings, connecting the community to free programming, 
at several area nature parks and preserves in both Albany and Schenectady counties. Both services saw a combined ridership of nearly 1,500 customers. Ride the Plaza Trolley Tours returned for a second year, offering guided tours of the Empire State Plaza. Three tours were offered every Friday, June 30th through September 1st. Both, most tours sold out with 500 customers, taking advantage of the Capital Region History Tour. Jamie Caslow provided the monthly earned media and community engagement report. Last month, CDTA earned 25 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio. Stories, stories focused on a ridership returning to pre-pandemic levels, a new universal access agreement with Beechnut in Amsterdam, the launch of our BRT Purple Line, the naming of the Rensselaer Rail Station to Joseph L. Bruno Rail Station, and the unveiling of our two pink buses for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. CDTA participated in a number of local events to highlight our work in the Community Patriot Flight Transportation, Black Nurses Coalition Breast Cancer Walk, the American Cancer Society Making Strides Walk, and the Capital Region Chamber DEI Summit. JB outlined social media engagement and provided statistics for the last month. We saw our follow, followers holding steady across all of our social media channels. Top posts included Beach Nut joining Universal Access Program and September service changes. Uh, looking ahead, we will host media events for the launch of our third BRT line, the Purple Line in November, and the opening of our new Gateway Mobility Hub in Schenectady. And that's all I have. No questions for Jamie or John. The next meeting will be Thursday, December 14th at 11.15. Microsoft Teams at 110. What have we done? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any, any questions for Jamie or John, I guess? <laughs> Seeing none. We'll move on to our final committee report, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee, Mike Grishaw. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, let's see, our committee met last Thursday here at 110 Water Relief F and via Microsoft Teams. Um, we have one consent agenda item, which was presented by Chris Desney regarding a resolution to merge with Warren County. We've been discussing the plan to expand our service area into Warren County and merging with the Greater Glens Falls Transit System over the past year. GGFT is a small system that serves primarily a rural population and has become increasingly difficult to meet the demands of transit customers in that region. The time is right to effectuate such a merger. Staff has been working with stakeholders over the last several months to facilitate this work. One of the requirements is CDTA's commitment and approval to execute the expansion. The summary of the provisions include the purpose, uh, assurance that we will meet legal requirements in the development of a transition plan. We need a motion to approve a resolution to formalize the board support and approve the, and expand our service area into Warren County and to merge with the Greater Glens Falls Transit System. We got a motion from Georgie. Thank you. Second. Dan, thank you. We have a revised uh, uh, resolution on the one that was in our packet. Uh, so that's in front of you. It covers, yes, it covers everything. It seems to cover a lot. As Chris, as Chris explained at the committee meeting, this is a requirement of the Federal Transit Administration. I mean, let's, let's be clear the board has authorized this action many months ahead of time, but what Chris has put before you in the field manda is literally every bullet that they want right. so that we have covered, we think, everything we need to do um, on their behalf is going to protect federal assets. And is the, uh, I noticed the commitment of, on the mortgage reporting side, that's all? All been worked on all the way now. Right, right, right. Yes. We'll see. Um, but. It's all been clear. 
as best as we know, is this kind of the last big step that requires board authorization? Well, there may be, uh, I don't want to say yes to that because there may be something else that pops up that we need. But but you know, frankly, um, work has been underway for many 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 months, as you know. And in fact, Chris sent me a picture today. I think it's I think it's an important day. It's our maintenance crew putting in the first CDTA bus stop sign in the month's fall. So I mean, we're pretty far down the path here. There's, what's the reception been from the residents? And I'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, are they, are they, are they going to in be general, in general, or? we're getting a real positive reaction, but we haven't changed anything. And we haven't done anything. I, even this, we expect some pushback on. For example, I think Chris has explained this. Um, they have bus stop signs, so we're replacing a number of them. But there are long stretches where there are no signs. It's basically called flag stops. You get off the corner. You wave your hand at the driver, and he or she pulls in or, or doesn't pull in. Um, so we'll see how that transitions. We're going to we're going to pull and sign every one of those locations. Not only is that a change for the customer, it's a change for the drivers. Um, I would hope most would welcome that, but from experience, I know now we're going to hear you're telling me where I have to stop. Exactly, all these stops have been reviewed. Uh, safety. Uh, we've been working with City of Lunds Falls and other officials to make sure where we locate them, where they want us to locate them. Film at 11. Uh, in general, though, positive. Yeah, there were no signs uh, when I took the bus to Troy High School. So yeah, but well, you were one of those kids who just like, <laughs> ran out. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Uh, when I when I uh, started here many many moons ago, flag stops were much more common than not. Stop, you know, posted stops have happened over time. And then there were different, you know, there was a Troy Fifth Avenue, and there was. A, we've done a lot of work. We actually now know where every stop is. We didn't. <laughs> That's a good thing. It is a good. Thing. Any, any questions about that? Yes, Jordan. Yeah, I think the. Um, obviously, I've said this for a while now. This is the right thing to do. It's awesome. Really excited that we're moving forward with this. And the summary provided was adequate. I just wanted to know about, um, you know, when, when we take a deep dive into the current service, and then we obviously hold public meetings, things like yep. that, and like just look for yep. um, upgrades, kind of, and service adjustments based on feedback and public outreach, kind of what does that look like? Is that like a year process, two years? Uh, uh, probably yeah. a year. We need to get to know the community. They get, they have to get to know us. People in planning are already looking at, but, but it would be a mistake, I think, for us to say, boy, we need more service there and we need less service there. Not quite yet. And are there service maps on our website yet, or will they be after this? That's transition, Jen. Currently, no, but there will be. Yeah, um, in, in all disclosure, you're not going to have things like real time passenger information on the phone and the signs and website, but absolutely, we'll be publishing the CDTA versions of those maps. Right now, it's a two page newspaper. We'll add eight or so additional pamphlets, kind of like what we do now with our current roads, and those will all be distributed. Great. Any shelters going up? Just sorry. Okay. Walk before we run. The signage itself would be a good, uh, <coughs> so uh, like below the table marketing yep. uh, technique. And that as is, well. as soon as those buses get, they're going to be wrapped. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Then people are going to say, whoa, this is real. Mm. I, I just think, you know, our planning team in general will add a lot of value to what's going on up there and just make it better. And Great. That's the goal. Great. Anything else? So we have a resolution in front of us, a uh, bunch of the second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's approved. Go on, Mike. Yes. And uh, we had one administrative discussion item, and that was the Washington Western BRT update. Uh, Mike Williams and Jeremy Smith provided an update on the Washington Western BRT, the Purple Line project scheduled to launch on November 5th. This completes our 40 miles of BRT vision and is 
and is expected to grow ridership along the corridor and improve key connections to education and employment. We discussed the existing local service and what the BRT service will look like after the launch. Capital sub-projects include a new intersection at Brevator, uh, the <coughs> Albany Garage expansion, parking accommodations, land acquisitions, a one-mile busway and multi-use path at the University at Albany, a roundabout at Crossgates, a host of new branded stations with amenities and many pedestrian improvements. Technology updates include traffic signal priority at 35 new intersections and three new queue jump lanes. We also discussed the major components of the communication plan. Uh, the next meeting of the committee will be December 14th, 12 p.m. here at 110 Water Fleet Ave and via Microsoft Teams. And that concludes my report. Unless there's any questions or comments. Any questions? Mike? Uh, we'll move on to the CEO report. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Well, let's stick with uh, Purple Line BRT. Uh, as we get ready to open open the BRT, a sense of accomplishment for sure throughout the company. And it concludes uh, really work that began circa 2008, 2009 with a board vision and, and lots of planning based on that vision uh, to, to do this. We didn't start out with a 40 mile goal. We started out with trying to get the red line up and going. But you know, the, the, the 40 miles evolved from that as, a, as I recall, and a couple of board members here recall. Uh, I've been going back and forth with Senator Schumer's staff. He very much wants to be here when we open this. November 6 is the date I'd ask you to maybe pencil in. Uh, as a possibility. So he and his staff and I have been going back and forth, and it's the investment in BRT is north of $120 million. So it's, it's been an investment that I think has paid tremendous dividends and will continue to pay tremendous dividends. And it, it really differentiates us uh, from everyone else in, this, in the upstate region for sure. And basically, it's, it's the talking point to meetings at the Capitol be with you know legislative leaders but especially with staff and governor's office and it 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 is what makes us uh, very different and it's, it, it signifies I think who we are so keep that in mind it's about 15 years of, of commitment 120 125 million dollar investment in the region um, it comes about as our ridership continues to surge as as Chris reported at, at um, at the performance meeting and as we, we sort of talk about in planning, you know, our ridership for six months is at 7.8 million. So if you assume we're gonna double that, um, that puts us over 15 million. I mean, that was something we would shoot at as a target um, eight or 10 years ago. That, that brings us back to sort of the heyday when we talked about ridership all the time. And ridership is an indicator, not the only indicator, but um, also, the only system upstate that's anywhere near 100%. I was at an executive committee meeting, maybe the executive committee meeting the other day, and everyone's at 70 or 80%, and growing, which is great. Um, but we're just a different, we're a different uh, animal. I think the 40, you know, we don't talk about this, you know, we're at 40, and John may have another one, we're at 40 universal access accounts, partnerships. Um, that is driving the ridership along with the introduction of new products. All good. Um, Gateway Hub kind of got lost in the shuffle here. It's just about done. Some, Jeremy and, and his gang have some finishing touches, but I think we're just about ready to schedule um, a ribbon cutting on, on the Mobility Hub, which will be the first, and we hope will be in the line of many. Um, we'll talk about collective bargaining agreement in the executive session. Um, Forgive the typos, but we have to get used to naming uh, what, what the name of the rental rail station is. It's the Joseph L. Bruno uh, train station. Thanks to almost all of you for being there and former board members, former executive directors, and thanks to Jamie Caslow and, and Jamie Caslow and her, her helpers. But Jamie had to navigate a, a pretty interesting situation of elected officials, family members, and others <coughs> who all wanted a piece of this, which I think goes shows you um, 
how uh, extremely popular the senator was and how de deep his, his, his reach was. I think we did the right thing at the end of the day. Uh, probably we, we can name it uh, after the senator. And the, that, that event kicked off uh, like a flurry of major activities here at CDTA. Uh, our fall festival, we talked about that, 500 elementary, you know, third and fourth or fourth and fifth graders uh, here. And we've all talked about the hard strand, you know, many of them couldn't, couldn't go on a field trip if they had to pay for it. You know, just here in that, we'll probably continue to do it. Uh, men wear pink, you know, men, men uh, wear pink is, in full, full gear, our pink bus pull. Um, the weather forced it inside. We did it in the new, new, new part of the garage. I think it's now found a new home. Um, we had, I, I have no idea how many hundreds of people were here yelling, screaming. Uh, hats off to the Siena baseball team. The Siena baseball team brought all uh, 35 to 40. College baseball teams have a lot of pitchers. So there's 40, 40 kids here, young guys, and young bucks, they yeah. took it to another level. Um, so we're going to have to top that next year. Pete Wall was here uh, cheerleading for the Broadview team, I, I which was very competitive. Very competitive, but I wanted to tell you that I, I, I looked around and I saw the blue shirts. I went over to the blue shirts and I'm like, come on, guys, let's go. And then you guys said, okay, Broadview team, and the people I was hanging out with, didn't go anywhere, and I realized they were National Grid. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the wrong team. <laughs> so, Carm, I played it off as well. Each of the board members were assigned a team. <laughs> and I ran across and I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> well, the other board members in attendance played it smart. They were neutral. <laughs> It was a great time. Um, we, we had a good time, um, but you know, a lot of even our, our a lot of our employees. Say, Why do you do all this stuff? And I think for this report, I I I take all those things and then I talk about forty universal access partners. It helps us to to attract a, a number of those pullers are also uh, corporate supporters. You know, through universal access partners. So one hand washes the other, as my mother still tells me. Um, great to see the annual strategic planning uh, retreat. We've got a great uh, agenda kind of coming together. Mark, Mark Ash is kind of running this, uh, but he got his part. Uh, we've invited Mark Castiglione uh, from the Regional Planning Commission to be with us and provide uh, maybe 15 minutes on what does the region look like and what is the region going to look like 10 or 15 years from now, demographics, geographics, things of that nature. Mark's, Mark's well versed in that side of the sort of thing. So I think it will give us a, a good opportunity to, to talk, to think. And Millionaire is a nice place to be. Um, what time? I have it uh, oh, at 8 o'clock. We'll get you exactly, probably 8, 30, 9 o'clock, somewhere in there, maybe light breakfast, and we'll feed you. So that's it. It's, it's, it's busy, and it continues to be. We've got, we've got a November that's chopping us off. Car, any questions for Car? Oh, this is part of the meeting that we open up for any board member uh, comments about any topic. Anybody have anything to say today? I, not on a serious note. Um, the impact and the, the, the follow up conversations I've heard about the events, I'm hearing those everywhere. I, I think they resonate very strongly with the community. Um, and they're fun. Which is a whole other thing. It's better, right? Yeah, great, great job, yeah. everyone. Yeah. yeah, that's what I said at the committee meeting for the for the kids for the fall festival. You guys, are all of you, that participated in it. They're still talking about it. I mean, fourth graders, third it was it was great. So I hope you understand the impact you had on them, and hopefully they're future riders or whatever. And uh, but it was it was phenomenal. Yeah, and there's so many sidebar stories. To hear stories, I knew I know a couple of teachers in Waterbury. To hear sidebar stories that kids who live in Waterbury and are I don't know ten years old, never been on a CETA bus. I mean, we're all over Waterbury. And his um, and his son, his father got to drive his bus there. Yeah, that's a nice story. Thanks, Pat. We had a couple of uh, dads who work here 
who were able to be the drivers of the bus that took the kids here. It's, it's, you know, that's just, we talk about work-life balance and getting closer to our employees. Well, that's the kind of stuff that means a million to people. I took credit for that. So of course. Course. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to tell you, at that age, at least for me, the bus driver was a hero. Yes. And so that's a really cool connection. Yeah, kids yeah. Kids. Yeah. Um, we are going to, uh, I'm going to need a motion to go into executive session. We do want to provide a more detailed update on the discussions uh, uh, with the ATU. Uh, so uh, if I can get a motion on that, please. Second. Jackie, thank you. Uh, all those in favor of, of convening an executive session, say aye. 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 Opposed? There'll be no action coming out, so people can go about their business. Just need the negotiating team to stay, please.